All right, everybody, welcome back to the workshop. This is gonna be my next installment. And this video is gonna be titled Stains and Washes. So what I'm gonna be going over is the types of stains and washes that I use. And I'm also gonna talk about some of the commercial products that I use. We're gonna go over tools and we're gonna go over the uses of stains. And I'm gonna show you some examples. So to start off, when I first started modeling, I used a uh, simple alcohol and India ink wash. And how you make this is you need rubbing alcohol. I use 91% alcohol. And the reason why I use that because it dries a lot faster than your 70%. Now there's three different uh, levels that I use or three different strengths that I use. I use a light, a medium, and a dark. So I'm using uh, India ink, which can be uh, found at Michael's. And obviously rubbing alcohol can pretty much be found anywhere. Uh, unfortunately, during the pandemic, uh, alcohol was hard to find. So I had enough to keep me uh, going for a year. But as you can tell, I'm starting to run out. So I'm going to have to make another batch soon. So basically, with the, uh, the formulas for the alcohol in the ink washer as follows. For the light, I use one teaspoon of India ink to one pint of alcohol. The medium uses two teaspoons of India ink to a pint of alcohol, and the dark uses three teaspoons to a pint of alcohol. And that's that's basically it. You can put the ink in here, and you shake it up, and it's ready to be used. Uh, so one of the things that we need to talk about is when you're using stains and washes, especially when you're working near your models or on your layout, be very careful if you're done with the ink or the wash or whatever you're using, put the cap back on it. Because if that tips over, it's gonna make a terrible mess on your layout or on your model. And um, I haven't done it yet. So knock on wood, hopefully I don't. Um, so we're gonna go on to the next one though. So the next one is gonna be acrylic washes. Now acrylic washes uh, are a little, little different. So I'm gonna show you how to make them. Now I use acrylic washes on mostly just when I build my Craftsman kits. I started uh, recently using this uh, and I like the results. So let's just make a really quick uh, acrylic wash. I'm gonna use raw sienna and then we're gonna use a piece of uh, a strip wood and I'll show you how to stain it. So you gotta shake up your paint really good. Let's see how much we're gonna put in here. Just a little bit. All right, that's all I have in there. Now, I don't have a formula for this. I just do it by eye. So you're gonna get your cup of water, get a pipette. All right, that's enough there. And then you're gonna take a popsicle stick mix it up. Just a little bit more water. The consistency you want, if I were to describe it, is skim milk. So it's going to be very thin. So that's your your wash, your acrylic wash. Let me just actually, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to it. There we go. Perfect. So you can see how the consistency is. It's kind of tough to see here, but all right. Now let's take a brush. Let me grab a brush. You can just use any soft white brush, it's fine. Soft bristle brush.
So the acrylic wash is going to act as a stain. Now with anything else, and this is a piece of scrap uh, balsa that I had hanging around. And what I do is after I put it on, I wipe it down. So it stained it now. Now you can actually go over this again with a um, another color or you can add another stain to it. There's a lot of different things, but so it has its purpose. And when you work with this more and more, you can start experimenting more. But I, I really like the uh, acrylic washes a lot because they really, they bring a nice subtle weathering effect uh, to your wood uh, when you use them properly. So that's your uh, example of acrylic washes. So the next thing we're gonna talk about, put this away. The next thing we're going to talk about is our oil washes. So you're going to need a couple different things for this. Uh, one of the things you're going to need is a old, uh, what I use is the old Floquil bottles. A local hobby shop gave me a whole box of them that he had. So these are all empty. You're going to need, and make sure you label, if you're using this uh, type of thing, make sure you label what, what's going to be in it so you have it. I have um, I have another one here with just mineral spirits. I know that mineral, that stands for mineral spirits. So I have everything labeled. So and you're gonna need uh, burnt umber. Make sure you buy the oil. And then you're gonna need the odorless mineral spirits. Okay, I'm gonna show you what to do now. Let me open up this can and I'll be right back. All right, so now what I what you have to do is fill up one of these bottles with mineral spirits. So this is filled with mineral spirits now. Now what you do is get my popsicle stick. So you're going to take your oil paint, now keep in mind oil paints if you worked with them before you know how rich they are in color. I'm going to show you how much you need. That's pretty much it right there. I don't know what that amount is, but that's the amount you need. So it's, you know, maybe like the size of a small blueberry, I guess. All right. And then what you do is you put it in your mineral spirits. Put the cap on this. And you're going to mix it up. Now it's gonna take a little bit to get this absorbed into the mineral spirit. So instead of having the video rolling, I'm gonna pause the video now. And then when we come back, I'll show you what it's gonna look like when it's all made. So give me a second, I'll be right back. All right, so it's all mixed. So this is what your wash looks like. Now this is an oil wash and it's flammable because you're using mineral spirits. So make sure whether you're working with alcohol, mineral spirits, any types of stains and stuff, make sure you read the bottles. Make sure you take your normal safety precautions when you're working with this stuff. Store it properly. Make sure you put your eye protection on. Be safe when you're working with this. All right. Again, with this stuff here, after you use it, make sure you put the cap on. Because if this spills, this is going to make a more terrible mess than the India ink. All right. Now, if you don't use this for some time, all the sediment, all the pigment will settle on the bottom. So before you use it, I encourage you to mix it up again. All right. 
So that's your oil wash, and that's how you make your own homemade oil wash. Real simple. I know you can buy stuff that's on the on the open market, but you know, make your own. Save yourself some money. All right, so let's talk about the commercially available products. This is has to be my favorite, which is uh, the Hunterline products. This is actually my go-to color, Driftwood. It's usually my first color that I make, or my first color I use on the wood, rather, and um, it works very, very well. So they have all different colors. I have a, quite a few, uh, few of them on my workbench. Here's another one called Thai Brown. They have rust, they have all types of grays. Um, I believe they're about 10 or $12 a bottle, but they're definitely worth it. If you go to a train show, pick up a few, find your local retailer and pick them up because they're really, really good to use. And again, read the bottles. All right, so we're gonna be right back to see the next one. All right, so the next one I wanna show you is the uh, Micromark version. These are pretty good too. I use this when I make my uh, homemade railroad ties, so this works well. And you also have a nice brown and a gray as well. You can mix them, you can use just one, you can use two, you can use as many as you want. They work very well, and again, whatever whatever your, is your preference. I like using these on certain things. I don't use them a lot, but I do have them, so I'm sure this will last me a long time. I'm not sure the prices on these, but I believe they're still available for Micromark. Now there's also some other washes on the market. I don't know too much about them. I don't use those. I'm just gonna show you the stuff that uh, I use. So now we're gonna be right back and I'm gonna show you some of the tools that we use when you're using washes. So give me one second, I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna talk about tools now and some of the things that you're gonna need one of the most important, in my opinion, one of the most important items uh, used when you're using stains and washes is your weights. And the reason why is when you start adding moisture, whether you're using your acrylic washes or your stains, your wood will warp, your wood will move. So it's very important that you brace your wood properly and then when you start adding stains, you weigh it down and you let the stain or the wash dry thoroughly before you move removing the weights. No matter what you do, you will get movement with the wood. So you have to have to get used to that. Uh, sometimes it warps really bad, sometimes it doesn't. It all depends how much moisture you introduce to your model or whatever project that you're working on. So make the investment. These weights are great. I highly recommend finding these one, two, three blocks because not only they're good weights, but you can, they're perfect squares and you can make perfect right angles and they're really good for when you're gluing stuff. So the next thing you're going to need is a set of brushes. You're going to need a set of brushes that are dedicated just to stains and washes. You can't use your regular brushes. So once you use it for a wash or a stain, that's it. So when you choose your brushes, Make sure that you label them, you put some tape on them or something, but these are the brushes that I use for my stains. Now, these three are for regular stains that I have here. Alcohol in the ink, the Hunter Lines, this stuff here. So these are the brushes I use for that. This is the brush that I use for the oils. All right, so you're gonna need a set of brushes. And like I said, once you once you use them for stains, that's it. That's their that's their only purpose now. And the next thing you're gonna need is paper towels. All right, so make sure you get a roll of paper towels to clean up any messes and also to take away any excess stain that you have. So what you can do, or one of the uses that you have for your stains. You can use them on castings. You can use them on wood. And here's a scrap piece of wood that we're gonna, we're gonna play around with. You can use them on hydrocal. And you can also use them with weathering powders. And I'll show you how to, what we're talking about with that. 
So let's start off with our regular India ink wash. Let me get set up and we'll be right back and I'll show you how it's done. All right. So we're going to assume that this piece of wood is braced. And you're going to take your India ink wash, shake it up. in the ink and we're going to put it on and just go all the way down nice and evenly all right so then what I do put my cap back on my ink and just to clean the brush what I just do is just wipe it on the towel that's done that's how we clean it now what I do is I take a paper towel and I blot it I take off any excess and you can see how it took off any excess and there's your piece of wood that's stained now you're gonna let that dry about a good hour before you put any paint on it um, but if you can see, the wood has a slight bow to it. It's already warping. So that's how fast it warps. You got to remember this wood is only 1 16th uh, thick. So it will warp very quickly. All right. So the next thing I'm going to show you is castings and how great using washes is on castings. So with this one here, I'm gonna use an oil wash. For this one here, I'm gonna use a hunter line wash. And these, I'm gonna use powders and a regular India ink wash, all right? So let me get set up and we'll be right back. All right, we're gonna start with an oil wash, but I wanna show you something, how fast this stuff settles. If you look and see if I get it on camera, You can see the little film on the bottom. So all the pigment is already on the bottom. So you have to make sure you stir it. All right. So I'll get my. Okay. So then we're going to. I'm going to dip the brush in the oil wash, and we're going to hit the blue one. Just make sure I'm on camera. Now, what I like about the oil washes is that the pigment is very, very rich. And it leaves a nice residue on the model, or on the casting, whatever you're working on. And I use this all the time when I do a final wash on a Craftsman kit wall, and it really brings out a lot of details. So we're gonna let that set up. And then the next one we're gonna use is our driftwood. on this one and so this is our driftwood stain and you just want the you just want the stain to like work its way around the casting or the detail part that you're working on and just let it do its, what it's supposed to do naturally. Now, if you look closely on top of that barrel, 
you're going to see a nice little shadow that it leaves. So hopefully when that dries, that, that most of that shadow will still be there. All right. All right, let me reset and I'll get the powders ready and I'll show you what I'm going to do with those. So I'll be right back. All right, so for the final, for the final demonstration here, I'm going to show you what I do with the powders. Now I'm using Bragdon powders and you can use any type of powder, running powders you want. But all you have to do is put a little rust powder or any color you want for that matter onto the piece. And then you're going to take your India ink wash. And just let it soak in. And you guys should do the whole piece if you want. And that's it. All right, so we're going to let these dry. And then we'll be back and I'll show you the final pieces or final, the finished product. Just give me a little bit. All right, everybody, welcome back. So let's take a look at the result. Now the oil is gonna take overnight to dry, but what's nice about using the oils is the rich pigment it leaves behind. And you can tell on top the rust that's sitting there. And then along the sides. So, that's why I like using the oils because the, the effect that you can get with oil wash, the, the pigment is so rich and that's what you get. It's just, it's really good stuff. Now, the regular wash I used for the uh, Hunter line, or the Hunter line wash I used on this barrel, you know, it's not bad. You can probably uh, use another coat if you want to make it more grungier. It's up to you, but uh, I'm going to keep it the way it is. These came out pretty good, and these were the powders and alcohol India ink. You can tell on the top. Now you can go back and dry brush these, and the highlights will come out of all the detail. The same with these, you can still dry brush them. You can also switch it up. You can, when this dries, you can use alcohol in the ink on top of the oils. The more layers that you put on, the more realistic castings you're gonna get. So you can do as many times as you like. If you look out, if you go look at a rusty barrel, count how many colors you see, and you'd be surprised how many you see. So the more layers, the better. But this will pass as well. These are metal pewter castings. And these are plastic. The two barrels here are plastic. So you can mix and match. It doesn't matter. You never have a problem with this stuff. That, um, I never had a problem using oils on metal or oils on plastic and vice versa. You're still going to get a great result. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you're not already using washes, I encourage you to start. Try it out. You're going to like it. Start slow with a nice alcohol in the ink wash and then move up from there, all right? So going forward, the future videos that we got coming out for my workshop series, the next series is gonna be called Tools of the Trade. The Tools of the Trade is gonna be a multi-video series. Basically, I'm gonna go over the tools that you need for different parts of this hobby. So I'm gonna talk about the tools you need for craftsman kits and plastic kits and track and electrical and rolling stock. So there's gonna be a multi video right now I got five new videos coming out just for tools of the trade so look out for those those are coming very very soon so I hope you enjoyed this video if you haven't already hit the like button subscribe uh, you can share this video I really appreciate all my subscribers subscribing to this channel and I'll see you at the next workshop series have a great night have a great weekend